A generation ago, romantic movies were different. They were intense and swoony and unbelievably upsetting. These were films that threw soap in your eyes and fed your heart through the mangle. They were stories of decorum and sacrifice, of subordinating your own desires to the feelings of others. Casablanca doesn't end well for our sweethearts, nor Brief Encounter, nor Breathless, nor Harold and Maud, or Shadowlands, or Badlands, or Love Story. They still make these kind of pictures, of course. Titanic is the most successful romance of all time, but they're throwbacks. Sure, the special effects are whizzier and our lovers do hop into the sack before one of them expires, but one of them does definitely expire in the end. Nowadays, of course, romantic films aren't like that. They're about endless sex and misunderstandings over a text message and gross-out accidents in the loo. Save for a few lovely blips like Before Sunset and In the Mood for Love, they're rom-coms, as concerned with tickling funny bones as yanking tear ducts. Women are to blame, of course. The sexual revolution means that the notion of a Mr or Miss Wright who fate might just push you in the path of is laughably outmoded. These days you've got to have a sense of humour about dating. Films like Bringing Up Baby and It Happened One Night were funny too, but they were marketed as screwball comedies rather than romances. Today we go to romantic films to help us cope, and in fact to indulge that impulse deep down that might just be attracted to the idea of one true love. After all, which of us doesn't have a crush on a movie star or other? That's sort of the point of them. So you're going to root for the couple on the big screen to get together and live happily ever after because, in some sense, you're part of that transaction. Their happiness is your happiness. If you can't get no emotional satisfaction in your own private life, well, at least you can always get your kicks at the flicks. <laughs>